we would all like to believe that if the time comes, that we can make the right choices. That in moments of pure need and sacrifice, we will rise up and meet our enemies with conviction. But that isn't always the case. Sometimes the choice is made for us, and we can only resign ourselves to fate. This is a story of sadness and loss. Of a family that was broken by the root in a way like no other. For it was not through savagery and destruction, but with sacrifice. This is the tale of Evelyn Cedar Ford, who would come to be known as the Root Mother. We start off in a familiar place, the room we are taken to during our first time within the ward. Here, sitting on a desk, forgotten, is the journal that begins our story, Evelyn's journal. Within is a glimpse of what life was like in the early days of the war. From our last video, we know that the Root invaded Earth first through the rift created by the Dreamers. The journal begins in December of 1968, 11 months after the first attacks started. Ward 16 and the Atoll had been abandoned. Commander Ford had sealed the way through the crystal and those that survived were trying to make the best of a new circumstance. Through the writing, we confirm the death of the scientists as well as the dreamers within wards 13, 16, and the Atoll. Strangely, although the journal mentions the personnel in Ward 13 by name, Belinda Marsh is missing from the list. Perhaps in her last moments, she found a way to escape using the Dreamer as a doorway. After all, the bodies we'd find in the locked room are both wearing military clothing. Dr. Marsh was a scientist and therefore, we would expect for her to be dressed differently. What we know for sure now is that her fate is probably uncertain and that she might be somewhere else. We do learn more about the invasion itself. It seems that the Root attacked Earth as a whole the moment they came through. Most of civilization across the planet was taken by surprise and overrun within days. This is something we will address at a later date with more detail, but I think it's safe to say that there were more dreamers out in the world than just those inside the wards. More importantly, these notes are the first mention of the strange abilities that Evelyn manifested in her life. In many parts of her writing, she mentions having prophetic dreams that relate to real dangers in the world. She talks about a connection that she feels with the root how she can see through their eyes and feel their emotions as if they were her own. However, as we come to learn, this ability has been with her for some time and extends to more than just the root. In one of her entries, she writes, August 12th, 1969. Had another root dream last night. This one was different, real. They were waiting for us in my dream near the hotel courtyard where we've been growing food. I told Ford about it, and I thought he'd dismiss it. God knows my CO did that often enough. But he said it was worth checking out. Good thing, too, because they were there waiting. We fought them off because of my dream. Evelyn was a lieutenant in the army before she joined the War 13 project and the war began. This means her dreams and abilities predate the route themselves, though she was ignored in the past by those in command. How awful must it have been to be able to see terrible events occurring but not having the power to stop them, to feel so helpless. We also see the beginnings of her romantic relationship with Ford, the founder. In this dire time, they seemed to have found each other, and though their personalities differed greatly, they made each other stronger. And so, a relationship blossomed from that, and even though it was Evelyn who originally asked him out, Ford's feelings for her were mutual. How they fell in love in a time where such a thing seemed ridiculous. How they married and brought about a child into the world, Nadine, as a rebellious act against the darkness that attacked them every day. These were the happy times for the Ford family. Sadly, they would come to an end before they even realized. One of our earliest missions in our search for the founder is to visit the Root Mother. Clues as to where we can find her are left behind inside the founder's hideout. Pinned to the wall near the exit, we find the final note that Commander Ford left to his grandchild, Ellen Ford. Ellen. I want you to know that I love you and that I'm sorry. Sorry for so many things. Words won't fix this, I know that. It's time for me to go. It took me a while from saying to doing, but here I am. I'm leaving to speak with the Root Mother in the old church past the subway tunnels. She'll show me the path away from this world, and then I'll be gone. Goodbye. And so we follow him in his footsteps towards the church. Inside we find an overgrown root system that centers on an old and frail form. A humanoid figure wrapped by vines and roots. She calls us forth and we learn that she is the Root Mother, one who holds knowledge of much of the world as well as the Root themselves. So, another seeks the Root's counsel. Closer, child. It's you 
the one who washed ashore. We see all things. We are the Root Mother, a vessel of wisdom through which the Root speaks. What is it you see? Seals the inevitable end. Has the hour come? Yes. The clearer it becomes. You seek to end the route, but the path is hidden. This vessel knows the road you seek. Help we must, but not where ears can hear. They will come for us. When bonds we break, will you protect? Will you trust? We are asked to help free her, and in doing so, she returns to War 13, a place she says she knows well. Once we return, we are able to speak to her, and in doing so, she confirms her old life as Evelyn Ford. But what exactly happened to her? How did she come to be this amalgamation of human and root? If we venture deeper into the church after having sent her back to Ward 13, we find a small room with a journal that gives us more answers. Reading through the journal, we learn that Evelyn's dreams became more problematic as time went on. The role as one of the leaders in her family seemed to take a toll on her. The first entry here is not until March of 1973, two years after the birth of Nadine. It looks like her connection to the root ruined strength in that time, her dreams became more vivid and emotionally charged. She described feeling the pleasure of killing as a root, hunting with them and feeling their emotions even more strongly than before. The connection became so strong that she was actively, if unintentionally, helping them attack other humans. This was something that she despised herself for and that we can see taking a toll on her mind over time. Having to watch friends and fellow humans being slaughtered, being a part of the event itself, and taking joy in it riddled her with guilt. She speaks of often waking up from her sleep crying or screaming in the night. With Nadine getting older, now reaching the age of five, Evelyn decided to hide the journal away. Her next entry isn't until 1988, where she dreams of a towering behemoth form growing from the ground and destroying everything in its path. This was something she knew could not be stopped. Her connection showed the pure destructive force of the behemoth. She also knew, through her link, that it was coming towards those she loved. Evelyn had realized that the connection she had worked both ways. She could see and be a part of the root, but the opposite was also true. They knew her. They knew where she was hiding, and they were coming for her. So she took it upon herself to stop that threat. Being linked to the root, with her connection strengthening each day, Evelyn found that she could speak to them in her waking hours as well, and that they wanted to speak to her. She tested this theory on a devil, sending all of her emotions and will upon the creature as it tried to attack her. To her surprise, it stopped, and she realized that she could control not only it, but all the roots that were connected around. As the behemoth entered the city, growing ever closer to the hideout, Evelyn made the only choice she could. In order to protect her home, her family, and those she led, she left them all behind. January 5th, 1989. It's in the city. It's coming right for us. I'm going to the old church, the roots thick there. I gotta go before Andrew wakes up or he'll stop me. Andrew and Nadine, if you ever read this, I hope you understand how much I love you. As crazy as I've been these years, seeing the root, feeling them, I'm still and always Evelyn Cedar Ford, your wife, your mother, and a founder of Ward 13. I will do anything if it means you'll live. They have to be stopped. Nothing else matters. Even if I have to become one of them, it'll work. I know it will. I can hide the ward from them, push them some other way, confuse them. But I don't know what will happen to me. I guess if you're reading this, then it worked. You're alive. It will all have been worth it. I love you, Nadine. I love you, Andrew. And I'm sorry. This is the secret of the Root Mother. One that we are now meant to keep as well. If we return to her after reading the notes, we get new questions to ask her. 
dreams only, faded and tattered. The founder, Andrew, and I were together before the root. Now the memory wanes. I bear its burden no longer. Ellen has no family that did not abandon her. I will not stand in for a mother. Old bonds would break her. Loss has made her strong. It is better she lives as she is. So here she remains, mere feet from her own granddaughter, yet unwilling to bring about the pain of the past. She sacrificed everything she had for those she loved, and only we and the founder know the truth of those events. To this day, she sits and protects her home. The story of Ellen gives us a lot of information about the way the Root operate within the world of Remnant. We learn that the Root are not just mindless attackers, but that they have a consciousness, strategy and tactics, and even a sense of emotion and unity. More importantly, this story gives us a greater understanding of how a dreamer would connect with a guardian. I plan to dedicate a video to this topic, as I think there's a lot to discuss here, but I believe that Evelyn was a dreamer. The way she describes her dreams and the connection to the root sounds fairly familiar to a dreamer and a guardian. I also believe that dreamers are people that are born with this ability all throughout Earth. I think that one of the reasons the root are still actively attacking the ward is because there is still a dreamer here. And that dreamer is Wallace. I have been getting some incredible support making this series and I just want to thank each and every one of you for that. You guys have been amazing. If you want to keep supporting the channel, then be sure to subscribe for more lore videos about this game and many others to come in the future. If you want to chat about lore, games, or anything in general, then be sure to follow me on Twitter. The links as always are below.